Please kick. Oh. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Kiss Capids podcast. And I have a very special guest with me today. I've tried to get her on the podcast for the longest time. She's been trying to avoid me. Uh, moved to different countries. <laughs> now she's back in Kenya, different counties. But hey, I told you it was going to happen eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so introduce yourself and tell people what you do. Hi everyone, my name is Talisa Lanoe. I'm a photographer and a content creator. I used to be a professional swimmer and I recently moved back to Kenya. Okay. You used to be a professional swimmer? Used to be. What happened to that? It's First of all, if you don't know, Alicia, or oh, Talisa, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Alicia, Alicia is a cousin, <laughs> keep confusing the names. So Talisa um, used to represent Kenya in the Olympics, right? Yes. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Oh, it yeah. Was, uh, the 2016 Rio Olympics. Rio Olympics. And then at the same time, I was supposed to go to, it was Brazil, right? Yes, Rio. It was Rio. Yeah. I was supposed to go and do something there for my kiss capades. Oh, wow. And then somebody stole my idea and concept and ran my campaign. You know yourselves. Oh, I'm so sorry to may hear God, that. May God bless you where you are. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so how was that? Just like, you know, because I, I, the podcast is all about health, wealth, love and happiness. Honestly, it was a dream come true. It was something that I devoted my life to since I was 13. Mm. Um, but swimming turned into more of a lifestyle than a hobby. Uh, you ate, you breathed, you did everything that was related to swimming. It took up about 35, if not more, hours of your week. Mm. Um, there were multiple sacrifices that needed to be made. So as mm -hmm. soon as the Olympics was over, it was a good time to say bye to my swimming career. Really? But um, for me, it wasn't just about the Olympics. I think it was more about the journey to the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Uh, like one of those milestones that you exactly. have set you, targets. Exactly, you work your way up. I mean, I started professionally swimming at 13, and then I only got to Olympics at 21. So if you think about it, it was eight years of a commitment just to get there. Yeah. And there were obviously bumps in the roads, there was highs, there was lows. Um, but I look back and I definitely wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. um, I got to see one of my dreams, come, my childhood dreams come true. Uh, and now it's time to move on to other dreams and other goals. <laughs> wow. No, not everybody has a story for the Olympics or representing Kenya in the national team. But, you know, kudos to that. Thank you. And just from that, like, I can tell, if anybody goes to your Instagram, straight ahead, they'll just know you're into, like, really extreme, extreme adrenaline spots. I more into living my life to the fullest. I feel like you should find things in life that make you feel alive and make you feel like you're living your life. And for me, that's things that people consider extreme. But uh, if you look at skydiving, you could literally fly. Who wouldn't want to experience that sense of freedom? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Uh, no, <laughs> no thanks. I guess that's why they <laughs> no say thanks. each to their own, right? But for me, it's just a sense of freedom. It's experiencing something that you would never actually get to experience unless you put yourself out there. Well, for people who don't know, I mean, if you go to her Instagram, like, you know, after this podcast, you'll get to know more about her. If you go to her, her Instagram, you'll see her doing a lot of stunts in the air. And not those ones of like when people are doing skydiving in Diani and they have like two other people strapped on them. She's doing it alone. And even, can you do the wingsuit thing? No, that's a goal of mine for the future. I'm only 20, way, no, 20 jumps away from being able to learn how to wingsuit. So it's coming up soon. And God bless you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just, I think I used to know one person who used to do it and then she flew back to France. And you know, that was just like the end of my dream of trying to even like get close into that kind of like realm. Lifestyle. Yeah, I, that I lifestyle. think people get drawn into different hobbies and different experiences by different mm -hmm. ways. Um, for me, definitely skydiving started off, <coughs> I wasn't really interested in it. It was just something on my bucket list that I wanted to Did you pick it try. up after swimming or just in the course of just so the swimming it thing? was when I was swimming, I was in South Africa, actually with Alicia, <laughs> now oh, that wow. you mention it. Mm -hmm. And all Bad of us cousins of decided mm. to try a tandem because I think skydiving is something 
that's on everyone's bucket list when you're strapped to someone else. Mm-hmm. It's something that mm-hmm. most people, except for you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. would like to try. Um, yeah. And I did it, and in my head, I thought I'd feel very rewarded by the experience. Yeah. But when I got to the ground, I felt a little bit disappointed. What? Everyone's like, oh my god, you skydived, you skydived. And I yeah. was like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh. This guy skydived. Oh, yeah. I was just strapped to him. Yeah. So I had it in my head that I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it alone. Um, but obviously with swimming, there's a lot of restrictions on what you can and cannot do because obviously you could hurt yourself. Um, so I put it on the back burner for two years and as soon as the Olympics was done, oh yeah, um, I decided to learn, well, do my first jump alone. And from there, it was just, the rest was history. I got my license, I'm on 180 jumps now and there's no looking back. <laughs> hey man, listen, not, not, not everybody can say that, but you know, what drives you just exercise-wise? Because all these things that you're talking about, like my podcast is about health, wealth, love yeah. and happiness. And I can also guess that you're also like a gym rat. I love the gym, yes. I think... Um, you see? Being a competitive uh, swimmer, you, yeah. you train like between, depending on the week, but anywhere from 20 to 35 hours a week. So you're used to waking up in the morning, either going to gym or the pool. It yeah. becomes part of your lifestyle. Obviously, I don't work out 20 or 35 hours a week anymore, but the gym and actually Bikram Yoga have been a really big part of my life lately, or always, actually. Mm. Um, I believe that in life, your health is the most important thing. Um, of course. You of course. need to look after yourself mm-hmm. in order to be able to pursue your goals and your happiness. So you can say um, it's just something that incorporated in your lifestyle from childhood from and childhood. And it's I just like part of you. Do you work out? <laughs> okay. I'd like to say yes, but no, but that's the thing. I but the only exercise I I do yeah. before you get back to your point and don't forget it is like my camera work. So if you see my video work there's a lot of movement and you're always running around i understand what yeah. it's like to be so, on set yeah for sure. so that's kind of like where i put in my but i'm trying to incorporate it it's just that i lack the discipline and that's why when i see somebody like you doing all those outdoor activities i really admire that because i would want that there's a quote that says it takes two weeks to make or break a bad habit so all you need to do is commit to it for two weeks two and then weeks. apparently it becomes part of your lifestyle well, I can so do two weeks is not a lot. You can try two weeks. It might incorporate a little bit of a, a Daily, habit right? Yeah. Um, I feel like, personally, the reason I love working out is, mm-hmm. especially in the, if you work out in the mornings, I feel like you have more energy throughout the day. You feel happier. You feel lighter, which is kind of ironic to some people because they're like, how do I go spend an hour at the gym in the morning and then have more yeah. energy through the day? But you actually really do. It, but your body can adjust to that, I'm guessing, as well. It can, but it in return actually gives you more energy throughout your day. So now if I don't work out, I feel lethargic, I feel lazy. But if I go and start the, uh, start the day at the gym, yeah. I have energy to attack my entire day. So definitely I, recommend incorporating exercise into your life. It's a game I, changer. I admire that because I really do want that and I want that six pack. So I'll try and do this. I'll commit to a part. Cause hey, how funny about we thing. go to the gym together? We'll try a workout together and see how it goes. Actually, we can do that to promote your episode. <laughs> yeah, you know not? what? Why not? When, let's, let's set that up. Okay. I'm up Sounds for that good. challenge. I'm Maybe up for it'll that be a good challenge. intro into the gym. <laughs> I'm up for that challenge because I guess that's another way of me just like committing to something. So if people are listening to the podcast, before the podcast comes out, of course. He will go to a gym session with me. <laughs> we'll do that and then I'll try and incorporate that in my lifestyle. Because last two weeks ago, yeah. I bought workout gloves. And trust me, you know, I've just been looking. I've just been looking. At them. <laughs> I just thought they look cool. But that's, that's, all, that's, all, that's all I get for now. I just look at them and I'm like, when do I start using these gloves? But anyway, that aside, let's move to more of what you're now doing. Like just... Is it full-time or can I say photography is what you're venturing into right now? So, I started... Or at this part of your life? At this part of my life, yes. I think that there's a lot of power in storytelling, personally. And it's very cliche to say, but a picture is... 
what is the quote? A picture Sorry. is what? A Without thousand words. words. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's some things that you can't convey in words, some sense of emotion, a story, but you can portray through content. Yeah. And that is what got me into content creation in the first place. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I picked up my camera and I completely fell in love. I've always been taking pictures, but just as a hobby. Um, before it was just for Instagram. And then mm -hmm. I ended up starting to take pictures of other people and other things. And I just fell in love with the power that it has to move you. And obviously, in the end, make a positive impact. Especially, I want to get into more um, conservation work and climate control. Because the only way what, you're going to raise the hell awareness... Is that? What the hell is that? Are you serious? I'm so serious, oh by the way. I'm not even gosh. lying. Listen, I'll tell you something <laughs> about my podcast. Like I learn so much. And at times when I ask questions, people think like it's crazy. But I really, I really want to understand it. And I also want to people, part of my audience, who don't know what it is, to, to actually also understand. Like, okay, when she's talking about this kind so of like, photography. You can go from conservation, look at poaching at the moment mm. right poaching is a huge thing here or if you look at pollution in terms of climate control so much of the ocean is polluted you walk down diani beach which is absolutely gorgeous it's beautiful but you won't make it five steps without picking up a piece of plastic is it that bad it's, right now it, it's super bad and it's not just huge pieces of plastic it's even plastic that's <coughs> been broken down you find flip-flops you find uh, toy tires you find uh, everything on the beach and like I want to inspire people to look after our world but also to live their life and uh, I feel like the best way to do that is to pick up a camera and share things with the world and you see that's different because when I'm asking this it's because when other people think of photography they'll think about editorial shoots yeah. and what else is common right now commercial shoots commercial shoots the Instagram normal, like, you know, just... Um I don't think I would limit it to just that. I don't take away the power from those shoots either. I feel yeah, like a lot of yeah. people work so hard to build up their brand or mm -hmm. themselves yeah. that even if you take an editorial shoot or a commercial shoot, you're still sharing someone's story. Mm -hmm. Someone's hard work has gone into whatever their brand that they've created, whether it's a company or themselves, yeah. and you get to be part of that process as well. Um, so whether you're making a positive impact to towards them and their brand or positive impact towards the world or things that you care about, yeah. I feel like photography is definitely a great way to do it. Nice. So what do you enjoy more when it comes to that? Like, is that, forget about the purpose, but what do you enjoy doing more? Because I can clearly tell if you're taking <laughs> pictures at the beach, you get frustrated when you're seeing, you know, all these things that are wrong and you want them to be in a whole different way? I think I'm passionate about two things. One, I like commercial photography because you get to sit with a bunch of different brands and get very creative about where their story came from, what they want to portray to their mm. target audience. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of creativity involved. Yeah. So I think anywhere that I can be creative, I truly enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. And anywhere that you can make a positive impact. <laughs> So very broad spectrums, but those are the two things that I enjoy. One makes me feel fulfilled. One is, who doesn't love getting creative, you know? Mm. So, um, before we continue with that, because I've seen like just through all these things that you're talking about, there's just like a time period you select for something, you do it, get it accomplished, move to the next, move to the next. Do you think photography is something that you'll stick to? Or you just think like, you know, because I can tell you're not like, um, you're an artsy person. You might like probably do this for two or three years and then be like, you know what, mm, time to move to the next one. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that there are certain things that you discover along the way that just stick with you. And I definitely think photography is one of them. Um, I would love to eventually also get into video. Um, but... When I decided to take this career path, I thought that it would be best to master one before venturing into the other. Mm. And obviously, you're always learning. So yeah, I feel something like... Something new every day. Definitely not two years, maybe ten years. However long it takes me to master... Yeah. I don't think you ever really master anything. But yeah. as long as I feel like um, I've learned and I've grown and I'm ready to venture into video, then I eventually will. Mm. But for now, my main focus is on photography. Okay, nice. But... Let's now take it back slightly to when, when you were a kid. Yes. 
what was your dream job? Because like we all had like those little <laughs> fantasies of like, you know, I want to be this as much as it might seem like it's a bit silly when you're a kid, but some people grow with that and manifest it to like just something that's completely different. When I was a kid, I wanted to be Laura Craft. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. So always had the sense of adventure, always wanted to travel. I support uh, that. I, I never really that. had a dream in mind. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Realistically, I think I lived in this little fantasy world as a kid of all the places I wanted to go and see. I wanted to be a badass who was capable of doing everything, whether it was swimming underwater, skydiving, doing and all these And maybe that's what things. inspired all these things that um, you're doing now. I just wanted to be fearless, to be honest. That's but that's what, what you're doing now. I wouldn't say I'm fear Listen, fearless. I'm very fearful sky, of a lot of skydiving, things. Skydiving, <laughs> swimming underwater. Can you do the deep dives? What are they called? I'm learning how to free dive, actually, but I scuba dive at the moment. Well, you see, those are the things I'm talking about. The slow like, pers I remember this this time we went to Mombasa with a bunch of friends. We were like, I think, combined so many different groups were like 32 people. And I was thinking like, since I can film and everything, wouldn't it be nice if we had somebody who can like, you know, do like the free scuba diving thing without like any gear or whatever, because I just got a new GoPro. And we can get like some really amazing shots that I... I can test. Well, out of the 32 people, I think it's three people who knew how to swim. Yeah. But again, each to their own. There's different things in life that make different people come That's alive. That's not good. I had to change my circle. <laughs> I had to. What if <laughs> something happens? Reasons. What I if think something that happens? Everyone should know how to swim. It's, <laughs> yeah, no, it's that a common skill people should know. Yes. But I'm saying, I think you commit your time and in this world like people chase after money but I think your time is the most valuable thing so people commit their time to learning and pursuing different things each yeah, person is different let's talk about that what, what you just said um, people people commit their time people people chase commit, co commit their time to different things obviously what, different the choice. money statement that you oh, said oh the money okay in life I believe that people chase money but yeah. for me the most valuable thing is your time yeah because I feel like Life is short. Life is unpredictable. You never, I know it sounds a little morbid, but you never know which day is going to be your last. So it's true. And a lot at of the end of the yeah. day, like obviously you need money to sustain yourself. Yeah. But even when you look at some of the wealthiest people, they're not happy. They're not. I feel like your happy, happiness comes from within, firstly. Yeah. And secondly, if you think about what the most valuable thing that you can give someone is, it's your time. It's your so effort. Do you think it's money your can make you happy? No, I think that money can help you sustain yourself and live a certain lifestyle that you may want, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily come with happiness, for sure. I mean, if you think about it, when people set goals, some people set a goal of getting a new car. Yeah. They're like, I want this car. And then they get this car. Oh, yes. And then they're not fulfilled by it. Yes. It doesn't buy you happiness. Once you start chasing money, and that's the thing, you know, it sounds crazy and stupid, of course, when somebody is listening to the podcast and they're like, I don't have money in my pockets. But the thing is, if money is the only thing that you're chasing, there can never ha be enough money. It's true. There can never be enough money. And all you'll be doing is working and chasing that money. And what happens in that duration, like you forget about things that are most important to you, like family, friends, all those moments just with people and... And your passions. You forget about Passion. why you're doing something for the love of doing it. Yeah. Um, I think when I first told my parents that I wanted to pursue photography, it's a little bit of a battle. <laughs> but eventually, yeah. after a lot of persuasion, my yeah. mom's like, okay, I know this great photographer I want you to meet. Mm -hmm. Let me set up an introduction. Maybe you can intern for him and learn a few things. And I was like, yeah, sure, of course. I'm always open to meeting people and learning new things. Um, so we went for coffee with him. And he sits down and he's like, so you want to be a photographer? And I was like, yes. And he was like, well, I hope you like being poor, <laughs> was his wow. response. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, that's a great <laughs> way to welcome a new photographer. And mm -hmm. I was like, no, it's, it's but okay. But he's prepping you to understand that, you know, if you're getting in it because of the money. And because yeah. even there are some people who look at photography, especially photography, forget, forget about video. Videos are a lot of work. There's no shortcuts in videos. 
in photography some people look at it like you know what i can just take a bunch of pictures put filters and everything and i get a jobs uh you know how you get that one perfect picture yeah. and then you get paid a certain amount x amount of money and those are the kind of projects that you'll just be working on i just think that again these are constructs that people or society set up for you um and if you set your own goals in life and stay true to who you are as a creator, mm-hmm. then these constructs kind of fall away. You're capable of achieving whatever you want to achieve as long as you stay authentic to who you are. But for sure I know one thing, I don't want to be broke doing what I love. That's for sure. I don't think sure. you can be because if you set goals, obviously like Sorry. <laughs> I'm always running away from the mic. Yeah. I think that if you set goals and you have a niche market that you want to cater to and a target audience and you're committed into putting in the hard work yeah. i don't think you're going to be broke you, you won't be you're going to make something out of yourself no, no but things it's will not fall chasing the money but yeah. things will happen as they will as things long will as you fall put into in place. what you need to yeah. right and people will start looking at your work differently appreciate it differently and you will be compensated differently because people coming for that specific kind of you had to touch on what i just said before i yeah. if you stay authentic to who you are as an artist mm-hmm. you are unique you are yourself people will come to you well mm-hmm. i hope for you <laughs> um but that's something that i believe and i'm literally implementing to my life and i hope that it comes true <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so eventually they will be driven to to you and your work just I'm sure you it's know this you do video. You put your own little spin on things. You don't yeah. try I mean you're inspired by a thousand different people, I'm sure, but like you don't copy them. You stay to, true to who you are and obviously it leaves your own little signature on things. Here's the thing about video. I don't know how you can copy video. Cuz there's just so much that you can do even subconsciously and will still have like a creative twist to it. Twist. But it'll yeah. have your own creative twist. Like have yeah, you yeah, watched yeah. videos yeah. from like other people that like have you seen Sam Calder? Sheesh. Okay, Sam Calder is incredible, but you start the video and you know it's a sca- Sam Calder yeah, video. Yeah. yeah. Or if you watch a Jay Alvarez video, they just Did you meet him when he was in Kenya? He was in Kenya? Oh wow. I have met him. Let me show him. you some pictures. Actually, I'm going Let to Let me just show you some pictures no, of I'm so what we jealous. did with him. Please show me. I'm joking. I'm lying, no. of course. But he I was. was so he was. Second. I'm he, going to. Of course, Kenya. he's running in um, in Canada soon. I just got accepted. Oh wow! So mm-hmm. hopefully get the chance. To Is meet he from him. Canada or the states? He's from Canada. Mm. But. Um, Yeah, anyway, inspiration in life. But like yeah. what I'm saying is when you watch these guys videos, from the second the video starts, there's a certain style to it that you just know who mm-hmm. created it. Yeah. That's true. When you talk about um when you mentioned something about you just moved back. Yes. Where were you? Staying? I was living in LA, uh working in production and also because I wasn't making enough money working as a waitress. Mm-hmm. So, I was working like 60 hour weeks. You're not doing what? Huh? You are not what? That's not what? Oh, just say that again. Just say that sentence again. <laughs> <laughs> you're in LA working and everything. I was in LA working in production. That's why I moved to LA because I wanted to learn all about how production works. Yeah. Um and hopefully get into photography there. But um working in a production house, I wasn't making enough money mm. to sustain my li- not even chasing money just to sustain a life in LA. Yeah. So I was also waitressing on the side mm-hmm. um and working 60 hour weeks. So I barely had any time for photography. I was just making enough money to pay my bills and honestly you in production. Just live to work. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I just got to a stage where I loved my life there in terms of my friends, the community, being surrounded by so many artistic people. Like I find LA to be people think it's superficial, but I think it's who you hang out with. I find it to be one of the most inspiring places because there's people there who are passionate about the same things that you are passionate about. There's so much collaboration yeah. and um so many ideas flying around. It's it's amazing. Um but I didn't have enough time to work on these things, which was heartbreaking. And I came back to Kenya for uh my mom's birthday actually and I got one job mm-hmm. uh shooting for Street Bistro actually and running their social media mm-hmm. and from there that led to another one and another one and another one and I realized Kenya's creative market is growing their industry is growing and I definitely wanted to be part of that so I made the hard decision to move home 
and I've so been. So you left LA to come back to Kenya? I did. Wow. I did. I feel wow. like. Wow. You wait till I get that visa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just no, like, I feel like I'm LA, just waiting for my visa. Mm. I feel like LA will always be there um, if I ever wanted to go back. Yeah, Kenya will always be there. You know, it's not going anywhere, but, right? Yeah, but you see, everything's already established in LA. In Kenya, there's so much untapped talent here. There's so many people. Competition is good for you, and where no, something no. is already striving, and they have systems that are working. Competition is good. Systems mm-hmm. are good. Yeah. But wouldn't you be rather part of building something up, helping? In Kenya? Yeah, I feel like, don't you feel like no the thanks. creative industry is just there but untapped into? It, it could is, be so much also, bigger than it is. It could be, but also I think it's like, it's at a place where people, if you watch or get inspiration from a lot of things that are online, you kind of see how we are, we are slightly behind the times. And even when you're working with companies, they're like, ah, oh, this is, can you make it simpler? Can't you, can, can't you just make it to something that, you know, people will, like locals will understand and can everything. Can I ask you a question then? Please do. How will it ever change then? How uh, will we ever catch up unless a few select, not few, many people are like, you know what? It's happening here. I want to invest my time and effort into this community because this community will become something. I just love when people are that passionate about Kenya and of course it also inspires me to slightly love the country slightly more. Not that I hate it, I'm just saying that, you know, um, we we don't really have also systems in place that favor um, our jobs because even from a lot of artists who've been here, photographers, videographers and stuff, they're just talking about how like companies still don't understand a lot or some companies who you would want to work with on a low scale as an individual or or rather yeah and they don't really understand when you give them a quote for something like hey i want to do this and this social media campaign for you guys for x amount of money and like ah why are we spending so much on just taking pictures like you know we can have our intern take our pictures with her phone if it's videos we can have somebody just record with their phone I understand where you're coming from, but yeah. if you look at but global in LA, trends, okay, but it, if you look at LA, global trends or even like social media trends, now people yeah. are starting to understand the importance of social media. I mean, my mom has an Instagram account, <laughs> yeah. right? Like everybody. I'm opening is, my is, mom's is, this this month. But that's probably. what I'm saying. The trends yeah. are there. It's happening. It may not be happening as fast as America, but you know this trend is coming, mm. and slowly, like I've started to see in the only few months that I've been here that people care about what's on their website. They care about the promotional material they're putting out there. Yeah. They want their photos to be hero shots. Mm. It's it's happening. It may be taking time, but it's in the process of getting there. Have you worked with any clients who disappointed you, like just frustrated you, especially in Kenya? Okay, luckily I haven't experienced oh, wow. that yet. So wow. fingers crossed that it stays that way. Listen, um, we can revo- revisit this conversation <laughs> after, after a couple of months, you know what? I've, so far in Kenya, I've been, I've been very lucky to work with a lot of passionate brands. They're very passionate about the, what they do and they have a vision for how they want their brand portrayed. That explains um, a lot. So it's been a lovely experience working here, actually. And I look forward to working with more people. I, w- I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Things are changing. <laughs> Trends are changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just one of those things that... Only time will tell, but also we can't like now start saying that, you know, we d- disown our own country, companies and everything just because they, they still haven't absorbed the right. I feel like it's growing. Every it is growing. It's growing and it may be a little behind America or a yeah. lot behind America, but we're growing and things are changing. But uh, also the thing about being a photographer or a videographer, yeah. Or just being a creator, yeah. you're not limited to one place. I mm-hmm. may live here, but there might be opportunities abroad that you might travel for, whether it's passion projects, brands, oh, yes, hotels. Please. Yes, please. You know, there's yeah. you're I fully you're support living that. with a camera. You can pick up your camera and you can go anywhere. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, ideally, I want to live here, but I would love to travel every so often, see the world, capture different things in the world. And just see how many different people work the systems in place and just creativity absorb it from all these different parts of the world when you're traveling 
Okay, interesting. So, did what what did you study? I studied international business with a minor in French and marketing. Wow. Yeah, so nothing to do. Okay, marketing a little bit to do with what I'm doing, but um, at the when I went to university, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to study, and mm -hmm. my main focus was on swimming. So mm -hmm. I thought business was the most general thing that could lead to anywhere, and obviously I feel like it's still going to help me in the future. Yeah, even um, if you open your own company or whatever, you just decide to do. At least it's a backbone. It's there if I need it. Um, yeah. Definitely will need it at some point. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, part of me wishes that I'd realized this sooner and pursued visual arts a little more. But yeah. I feel like if you're interested in something, you're willing to do what it takes to learn things by yourself. Um, I've done a few editing courses, like short courses, mm -hmm. but a lot of what I've learned about um, shooting and camera is all through YouTube. Instead of watching Netflix at night, I'll throw on either a podcast or a YouTube video and learn different things because I feel like when you're passionate about it, it's genuinely as interesting as watching something on Netflix. I think YouTube has made a really big impact in just like the new creative age kind of guys because that's where we learn like everything exactly and there's another app called Skillshare which I've had for a month now what um, is it free no it's twelve dollars actually there's ah. a free version but there's there is a free version they yeah. just changed it there's a free version and then there's a twelve dollar a month version mm -hmm. but you can go on and you can watch tutorial videos on just about anything what is it called again Skillshare it's like Skillshare. 3d animation creative writing mm -hmm. um, storyboarding or you can even do like accounting if you're <laughs> if you're studying accounting they have mm -hmm. accounting lectures mm -hmm. it covers basically everything and um, I've been taking a creative writing course on there actually because I feel like it could help with storytelling um, writing yeah because I feel like if you want to tell a story there's so many different ways to tell it. Obviously, I'm, I'm more against photo, but sometimes when you have your work, you need to be able to describe your work as well yeah. to certain people. Um, and I struggle with that because for me, when I when I shoot a photo, I know what I want to express. I feel like it's expressed in the photo, and then I come to writing a caption, and I'm like... So do you do like the mood boards and stuff, kind so of like that? For shoots, yes. Obviously, I'll regard depends on what the shoot that I'm doing, but yeah. uh, I'll sit, if I have a client, I'll sit with the client, find out what their vision is, mm. I'll ask them what the four things they want to portray are, what is important to them as a brand, ask them a bunch of questions. So once I've got an idea of who they are and what they want to express to the public, I'll make mm. a mood board, we'll go over the mood board and then we'll set up a concept for the shoot and then shoot, and obviously post-production and whatnot. I've never but, done um, a storyboard. Really? I love storyboards and mood boards. I hate storyboards. Why? Because I think <laughs> in college you used to be forced to, to do the storyboards and it just never made any sense to me then. Now I do understand. Of course, if it's something like a more structured commercial yeah. and everything, but for the kind of videos or niche that I've created for myself and what my clients come for is more of a like you breathe me, I envision it in my head, and I go create it. That's not the best way to work. I guess it's different <laughs> in video, because in video you have you have a narrative. You can go yeah, with something. Yeah, but like yeah. a photo, you look at one photo and you want all these things to be oh. expressed in that one photo. And that's where so I think you a need picture is worth a thousand exactly, words. So you, you need multiple pictures. You need a mood board to mm. try create that mood because obviously mm. you're not going to look at a picture and be like, I want to <laughs> copy this picture. You want to be like, okay, I like the mm -hmm. moodiness of this picture. I like the sadness in this picture. I like this emotion in this picture. Mm -hmm. Or I like the lighting in this. And you tie together all these different elements of where you get inspiration from yeah. and you make your own creation well, that's interesting yeah because you know <laughs> so many different people have different ways of working but I know professionals for sure I'm just saying personally I've never done like because it just takes me back to college and I used yeah. to hate it a <laughs> lot a lot but you know time, times change who knows maybe if I get somebody else plus I also work alone most of the time I don't really work with a team and do you enjoy that just because you have full creative control or yeah yeah i do 
not unless it just depends also ah, but I've shot I've, I've done some stuff with Alicia it was different you know yeah. if it's two creatives working on something or three it's normally super easy but if you have like a client who says maybe you do you do you do the job they according to the brief they give you and then they tell you something like um I don't know why I don't like it <laughs> but but I but just don't, don't like it. but I just don't <laughs> like it can you come up with something else so that's what I mean from when when it comes to like if you're dealing with a creative it's super super easy, easy to yeah I think that bef- especially that they gave you the brief that is very strange um, I You've think you've never had that I've never had that but Alicia's done a lot of videos and I've heard Have you talked to her and yeah, has she said she's literally <laughs> <laughs> she has been on a roller coaster oh, yeah, on, yes. some, on some projects. Yes, and yeah. I've heard about the horrors of it, but luckily yeah. I haven't That's experienced it myself. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so far so good. Let's not jinx it. No, no, no. It's <laughs> not even that. Like you'll always get kind of like, and those are the things that also challenge you to get out of your element and start thinking differently. I think the biggest thing is a lot of people when they want content, they're yeah. just like, okay, just get me content. They yeah. don't want to yeah, take yeah. the time to sit with you and be like, okay, like what this are we trying to achieve? This is the underlining mm-hmm. story of my brand. This is what's important to me. This is what I want to achieve. They're just like, no, go shoot. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when they give you like that kind of on top riff raff answer, you don't have a lot to work with. Mm-hmm. So how are you supposed to capture their vision if exactly. they're not sharing their vision? So it leaves it leaves you a little bit on the deep end for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sounds like a horrific experience. <laughs> no, it's bad. It's horrible. I've dropped clients because of giving me changes. I could do four changes. I'm like you. Clearly, you're just you trying to torture about me. What you want, yeah, and just I can deliver it to you. Exactly. Yeah, it's just like if they tell you, if you tell me what you want, I'd be able to produce that like a snap of a finger, because I do understand. But if you just make things hard for me, it's a whole different process. So, um, since you're in the photography game and everything, what's your camera of choice? Let's go with that. I'm a Canon fan, big Canon fan. Canon. <laughs> Mr. Saudi over here. Um, I have the Canon 5D Mark III. Um, I love it to bits. Love it, love it, love it. Um, the colors just seem to come alive in Canon. The colors are good in Canon, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm very inspired by colors, textures, experiences. So mm. definitely... I love so the just because of the color, nothing else, no, technical wise or anything. Honestly, so or what I, would make you? To be honest, to be yeah. very honest. What was your first camera to use? My first camera was the Canon Rebel T5i. Yeah, that's, of, that's a that has the touch screen, right? No, no, no. Doesn't? No, uh, not the i. It's the T5, the T5 Rebel. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when I bought it, it was probably six years ago. Mm-hmm. I got it on ebay as a pack of things for like three hundred dollars i was like yes this will do Mm -hmm. that camera honestly was incredible but it it doesn't have it doesn't even have a full sensor it's like one of those old old cameras um and i learned on that and just transferring over and growing with canon was really easy because of usability you already know the functions when you're in set you know exactly what to do yeah um and the Canon menu is also super More friendly. Na- yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's easier to navigate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh-huh. then from then, I started buying lenses. And then, you know, when you start committing to one camera brand, yeah, you invest in different things, and then you end up having different lenses for that. So then I just stuck with the Canon brand. But honestly, I don't see myself. I'm not tempted to change Okay, at so all. what are you using now? The Canon 5D Mark III. Ooh, 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 I highly ooh. recommend it. Okay, that's a good camera. That's a g- plus. It's a full frame, right? It's a full frame. Yeah. Okay, so uh, speaking, with, let's just go to the technicalities and stuff. What lenses do you own, and what's your favorite lenses? Ooh, that's hard and what's your hard favorite one. lens? Okay, curr- everybody has a favorite. I own a wide angle, and I own a portrait fi- uh, 50 mm. And then hold on, which which wide angle are we talking about? What's the 24 to no, the 20 24 to 105? No, Is that no, 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 it's 24 to 37, I think. 24 mm. to 30, mm-hmm. So not it, it's the least expensive one, but yeah. honestly, 
he's asking what my favorite is. I think that's my favorite, especially for. That's your favorite. Yeah, because you get more in the frame. I love it. Okay. Especially mm-hmm. if you're shooting um, landscapes, oh, landscapes or rooms okay. or okay. wide, like tr- for travel, definitely my favorite lens. Um, or oh, plus you can zoom, right? You can zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's the 24 to 105 normal lens, which mm. I also love just because it's um, it's you can basically use it for anything. For anything, you know yeah. What I mean, it can yeah, be yeah. in your camera bag, and whether yeah. you're shooting a person, although the aperture only goes down to 4.0. Yeah, um, that's the downside. But it's but a it's really great good because it lens. has a decent zoom. Yeah, it still gets a little bit of that depth of field effect. Mm. Um, and then I have a 50 mm portrait lens, which goes down to 1.8, which is incredible oh, yes. for shooting people and yeah. portraits. Yeah. So again, I can't choose Hold a on. favorite one. Hold oh. on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Stop, everyone stop. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about lenses. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to retract what I said two minutes ago. I don't have a favorite lens, and this is why. Um, so I have, again, the wide angle 17 to 44 ml, and that goes down to like a 2.8 aperture. Mm-hmm. Uh, great for landscapes, rooms, trying to get a lot in your frame. Really good for travel and adventures that you go on. Uh, I also have the 24 to 105 mm that only goes down to 4.0, but it's great versatility. You can take it anywhere. And then a portrait lens that goes down to 1.8, which is great for people, portraits, mm-hmm. um, emotional expressions you're trying to convey. So I guess it depends on what I'm shooting, my preference of lens. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I used to shoot is a drone. I use a DJI Phantom 4. Which one? 4? Yeah. I have the Air. You have the actually, mm. I want to switch it because I love my DJI Phantom 4 Pro, but, but it's bulky. It's huge. It's bulky. And I'm a girl. How do you so, carry it? So this is what I'm saying. <laughs> it is the biggest struggle in the world because when I travel <laughs> yeah. and the weight restriction is 23 kgs, but you put mm. your drone in the bag, it yeah. takes up half the suitcase. Yeah. You have absolutely no space for anything else. Sell and then it, you have a parachute as well. Uh-huh. And then a camera bag. So your your whole suitcase is taken up by things that you love doing and there's no room for clothes, which... Yeah. The people don't that even know need me is <laughs> actually a big problem because I love clothes as well. Yeah, so um, you don't even need to go to the gym. You have just, just walking around with so stuff. much stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but definitely mission. for a drone, if you're to buy one, go for the new. Yeah, the so air is nice. I want to switch to the Maverick Pro too. Um, hmm. Great camera. Very sleek, easy to travel with. Um, and the range. The range is incredible. The only thing that scares me is it doesn't do as good as the Phantom 4 Pro in wind conditions, in high wind conditions. No, but it's but it's definitely but worth the luggage range, space. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I, I can't trade the, like even just after using the air. Yeah. Like I remember there's a friend of mine who called me and he was like, well, there's somebody selling their Phantom, Phantom, I think it was 4. Yeah. And then he's sending me pictures and everything like, yo, it's for throwaway price. If you want to, I'm sure you'd be interested in this. And I was like, bro, even for free, I do not want it. Cause I was like, I need a whole custom suitcase to carry it. Okay. I have a custom backpack, which works perfectly. You see? But, but how big is that? <laughs> I try to climb my longer not with it. Let's say it didn't go very well. Um, <laughs> but honestly, yeah. if you're looking for a beginner drone that you want to learn how to fly, oh, yeah. I are you, are highly you, uh, recommend it. No, I it's, do. Because nice. honestly, I learned on it and mm, yeah. yeah, I'm not the best flyer or driver um, yeah. in the world. Definitely a horrible driver. <laughs> so can't imagine me flying. <laughs> it was an uh, interesting experience. I've almost lost my drone once or twice mm-hmm. um, but it's it survived and if you're keen to learn i definitely recommend starting on that for sure so what what else is in your camera bag because we know we've had the lenses we've had the camera body which is amazing definitely also in my camera bag drone. there is um mm-hmm. i recently invested in lighting um i think that especially for studio shoots or yeah. Even certain shoots, you can't get everything you want to portray with natural light sometimes. Yeah. Apart from, obviously, landscape photography and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I recently uh, got some lights. I got a few speed lights. Give me brand There's names. Godox. So I got a Godox set. Ooh, um, you see? Again, <laughs> not rolling in money. <laughs> but honestly, it was a great lighting kick to start out with. Um, I got yeah. a couple reflectors. Some speed lights for, out, like, uh, for outdoor shooting. 
Yeah. And um, what else is in my camera bag? My tripod, mm. a remote. Which one? Um, which tripod? Do you go for Manfrotto? I actually got this uh, travel f- tripod. I don't even know the le- uh, the brand of it because my uh, grandfather some Chinese recently brands have nice uh, tripods. I, it's not Chinese. My grandfather it's was not? the sweetest thing. Uh, on yeah. Christmas, he asked me what I want, and I told him anything to do with my camera-related things because okay. obviously you've got to start building up your equipment as a photographer. Yeah. And uh, my grandfather went to this camera store in Cape Town, and he wrapped it up, and he came home, and on Christmas he was so proud of it. He was like, "I got you the best tripod." ever <laughs> I've never heard of the brand but honestly it is an incredible tripod yeah. and I'm truly grateful so yeah. I have no idea where it came from but mm-hmm. it's serving me well um, I also also have a remote for in case I need to, if I want to be in the picture oh yeah oh yeah I, trust <laughs> me if I'm trying even, to even for me see why this I'll, this is why yeah. this is here because I mean it comes in handy I feel like it's handy especially if you're trying to learn a different way of shooting things or you want to learn something about lighting before you get to shoot you can play around on yourself as the subject for a little bit mm. before you get there um what else do I have? I rent a zoom lens for whenever I go on uh, safari. Se- 70 to 200? Yeah. No, oh 70 yeah. to 400, actually. This thing, Four. is, this thing is huge. 400? When I say huge, um, Sheesh. I literally have to put it on a sandbag or a tripod. <laughs> it's so big. Um, but great, great for wildlife photography. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, when I start doing video, I want to get a gimbal or at least the DJI Ronin, right? Or the Ronin yeah, S? The Ronin S. Oh, that's a good one. Um, Especially so for, for the, the body the, the camera. List. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then, um, so that's on the list. What else do I want to invest in? I have gels for the speed light. Gels are really fun to play with, oh, especially yeah. in studio. Yeah. Um, hmm. Do you always get caught up? Because, like, I used to have this problem. I used to get caught up with buying gear. Does that like does I that do? affect you at times? Because when you're following your favorite YouTuber, or these guys who you like, you know, you follow and everything, and then they're like, "Hey, what's up, guys? Like, Sony just sent me this. Canon just sent. Me. Have you seen the new Canon? Is it 85? Oh my gosh, that's not even get started. Is it 85 millimeter? <laughs> F 1.2. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen. What's the price tag? I don't even want to say it. Two thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> But I can tell you for sure that lens, I'm sure if you use it once, like you're gonna steal that money if you don't have it. Yeah, I mean, my dream camera is the Canon XD1. The one, one DX? DX? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And honestly, oh. I've looked up to that. I want that camera so oh. badly, but obviously not affordable. It's crazy um, expensive. So, yeah, yeah, camera equipment is a really expensive. I just you don't feel, feel like, like you get caught up in that whole. Like I feel like I'm pushed and pulled in different directions because obviously you need to invest in what you're pursuing but also you need to invest in experiences and living your life yeah yeah um so for me skydiving is also a very expensive sport i've chosen very expensive Mm -hmm. (laughs) expensive hobbies in life not necessarily a good thing so um and i wonder why you're saying like you know the money wasn't enough when i was working you're blowing it all in your hobbies though okay but yes like (laughs) okay if you choose to commit to something you want to be good at what you're Plus doing. Plus, it doesn't even matter at times because you're like, you know, as long as I'm getting this yeah. money, I'm investing in something you're that I like. You're investing in yourself or you're investing in a skill. You're investing in getting better at something. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth it. And yes, a lot of the money that I made in LA did go to skydiving. I knew but, it. Uh, I knew and it. And tunnel time. Tunnel time is ridiculously expensive. And what's tunnel time? You know the wind tunnels that you can go learn in? They're like... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can go yeah. and actually... Yeah, yeah, So they have like kid experiences learning how to fly or you can no, go with the much, coach. How much are we talking? talking about oh my gosh um, i would want to know and 15 I'd want minutes with a coach was something like 300 dollars for 15 Jesus minutes Christ. but 15 Wait. minutes equates this to is in the wind cents. tunnel this is the wind tunnel oh. so people go to russia um for two weeks and blow like uh five thousand dollars there but then they come back being one of the best skydivers ever uh. Oh, so but after that, yeah, it actually really helps a lot. Because it's if not you think about it, 15 minutes in a wind tunnel equates to 15 skydives. So you learn so much more so in those just 15 minutes. diving from the plane to the ground, it's approximately... Wait, what? Yeah, it's so short. I, if you it's think about seconds. it... 60 seconds. Like if you do your jump, is 60, 60 seconds. Well, 60... S- yeah, 60 seconds of free after fall. After you pull, after you no, pull no, the no, shoot. No, before you pull. Like when you leave the plane to like pulling or something like 50 to 60 seconds. Mm. It's over really quickly. Um, and then you have the entire canopy ride down. But yeah, uh, yeah 
It's so three hundred dollars for the wind tunnel. How about just the dive itself from Once the plane? Once you get your license and everything, it's not bad. I think there's certain the drop zone that I jump at is twenty dollars to get on the plane and jump. What? So it's not bad. But that's getting okay. your license and but getting training you, yeah. and all yeah. these different things, that's what's expensive. And then your gear your gear you can buy a car with how much you spend on buying a parachute. Really? So all these different things. How much things. is a parachute? <laughs> oh I wanna know. So you Listen, can buy a new cha- parachute for anywhere from Eight to ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I bought mine used. Wait, I bought mine used, wait, and wait. I pieced it together. Wait, a parachute is that expensive? <laughs> it saves your life. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, no. If you, if you, put, it, if you put it that way. That. <laughs> so when you think about all these different hobbies, oh, you can't forget cut buying a wing suit. Something else I need to think about for the future when you eventually get into. I'm sure, it's more it. expensive. Um, no, you can attach attach it to your parachute. I don't actually know how much wing suit is, but mm. if you think about it, with all these different hobbies and my profession in life I don't get caught up in buying gear because I feel like there's so yeah. many things that I want to learn how to do or yeah. progress in yeah. that you need to spend time or you need to actually you spread it out on what you want when you're to buying. get when yeah. you're buying something yeah. you need to and plan is it, it out. necessary is it necessary and I feel like gear rental is at least this like I was saying there's a community in Kenya so gear rental isn't hard to come by here um, so at least until you know you definitely need something in your life. For example, I didn't buy lights until I'd probably rented lights like 20 times. And I was like, wow, I rented it 20 times. I could have spent that on buying my own lighting gear. Or even with the wide angle. I w- rented the wide angle lens so and so many times to the point where I was like, it's time to invest in my own. Mm-hmm. But there's some things that you might use once off. Like for me, like I don't go on safari that much even though i would love to so <laughs> <laughs> buying a zoom lens a 70 to 400 wouldn't be wouldn't be in my priorities i'll you know tell you saying? where that lens would come in handy yeah where if you're going back for the olympics <laughs> as a photographer <laughs> Uh, I don't even see that being a, uh, being a goal at the moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's different things that you save up for, especially not just things, travel yeah. experiences. I feel like that's something else that is important in life. Yeah. So. And definitely, like no. you see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, now if you think about it and we break it down that way, you also tend to understand now how at times you might have to say no to some clients yeah. who don't understand what you're bringing into to the, the table. Because um, you see all these things that you're talking about. To be honest, when I first started getting started here in Kenya, I did a lot of things for for free. I did a lot of things that weren't paid for, well. For exposure? For exposure. <laughs> and it just came to another realization where your time is valuable. Oh. You know, like people don't understand, but for me, especially when I'm editing like campaign shot, I feel like Everything. goes between one to three, sometimes five hours, retouching, color correcting, make sure everything's perfect on that one photo. And then you take 20 photos, and next thing you know, you've stayed up all night editing just 20 photos. And if, not I, into if two I days. think about it, photography to me, it's way harder than video. Honestly, the hardest thing, I, I, I sit and I, I edit can't. with Alicia all the time. Yeah. She'll spend a whole day editing and finish an entire video. Yeah. And I would be on photo <laughs> number three. And yeah. I'm like, how the hell are you doing this so <laughs> fast? And she's like, why are you on photo number three? It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be perfect. And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. it has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe that's what's slowing down my workflow is when I look at something and something bugs me about an image, I can't be like, okay, it's done. I need to be like, what's bugging me about this Are image? you kind of that perfectionist when I it comes am, to... I am, I am. I feel like mm-mm. you spend so much time shooting it and trying to portray what this person's feeling. And then let's say one thing's off that's bu- bugging you. I don't mind undoing everything that I just spent the last 20 or an hour doing and then redo Cle- it I'll, so I I'll feel tell, good about it. I'll tell you one thing. It's going to change. People no, no, no. I'm just saying. I'll tell you one thing. Clearly, you have a lot of time in your hands. No, I don't. <laughs> Clearly. I really don't. <laughs> I would never, ever do that. That's why. But don't you feel, Even, again, maybe this is just because I'm getting started in this industry. I feel like what we were just talking about with Sam Calder or um, Jay Alvarez is whatever you put out there is an extension of you. Oh, true. So if People it's not that. perfect, Here's in my thing. eyes, is it truly a true depiction of what I see? But listen, let's think about it this way. Mm. How do you get better at something like let's just say like even just the, the jumping 
Pra perfect practice makes perfect. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Perfect Hold on. practice. Okay, parachute. Uh, just jumping off a plane is a whole different example. That has to be perfect for sure. But I'm just saying, like, even when it comes to art, there's nothing wrong. Because, listen, you have an option of taking a hundred pictures. A hundred pictures. So, if you get stuck on retouching this one picture, and yet tomorrow you want to go and explore a whole new experience, that slows you down from your creativity. New experiences that we're talking about right here. And first of all, like, yo... You can always take another picture. It's true. You can always take another picture. Yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like... It will slow you, you down. You know that, slows, right? I agree. It slows <laughs> me down. There's nights that I haven't slept because I have a deadline. And next thing I know, it's 8 in the morning. And yep. I've just stayed up all night editing because yeah. I'm taking my time. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely recognize the fact that it slows me down. But I feel like at that point, <laughs> when I commit to someone that I can do something... I want to know that I've done it to the best of my ability. What if you do it to your best ability? And then when you present it to the client, you know, like you've just started yeah. out. They're like, mm, I don't think the picture is speaking to me. I don't know what's wrong with it, but I just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'm going to be heartbroken, <laughs> which is true. But luckily that hasn't happened yet. Um, um, maybe because I spent so much time editing Oh, them. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, no. Um, but yeah, a lot of people that have been in this industry longer than me have told me that this will probably change over time. It will, it will. Um, at the moment... Mm -hmm. I think maybe it's a bit OCD, maybe just me starting my brand, but I don't see it changing anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, or changing maybe at all. But like um, I said, we'll revisit this I think conversation, we'll revisit don't worry. We'll revisit it. I think yeah. that obviously you have different photographers that can yeah. go take 120 photos. I think the more that I'm learning about my style and who I am, yeah. I'm more of the person that you call for your website hero shots that when you first get to your website you want that amazing photo that's like hey draw people in mm. so yeah maybe there they are photographers out there that can go shoot everything for you and give you a lot of content for your social media and whatnot but i'm the person to call who you're like i want a marketing campaign yeah. which is probably what 15 20 photos at best yeah um so yeah spend the time on editing those because you don't have like a whole basis of things to edit. And it, but it's true even if you say it that way because I think if you find your own niche yeah. you'll kind of understand how why the perfectionist comes out because that's what I want to focus on like I don't yeah. do event photography I'll oh, yeah. do an engagement shoot for you I'll do a wedding shoot for you mm. of just the couple just so I can focus on the those intimate, shots nice, those intimate simple creative shots. things because yeah, yeah. when you're just shooting everything or yeah. events people <laughs> do people get like, creative oh, and they do of me. great but I feel like for me, it would be hard to be creative when I'm taking a Too thousand many, photos. Random, random exactly. photos. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, for me personally, mm -hmm. definitely those campaign shots are what make me drawn to photography, I, where you I can express your I, creativity. I completely understand. <laughs> Trust me, I understand. And then uh, another just important thing: Do your parents support what you do? Yes. Mm. Um, Obviously, I come, my mom is uh, a Muslim mom uh, from an Indian family. Mm -hmm. So at first she imagined that I'd move home and take over her business or um, do something As in the should. business industry, yeah, which, which yeah. I get is expected. Um, yeah. But when she realized how much this meant to me, and same with my dad, they've been so supportive. Mm. Um, and yeah, I couldn't ask for better parents in that aspect for sure. Yeah, because you know, that course I know always makes you happy just even when you're actually waking up in the morning yeah. to pursue it. I mean, a lot of people I feel look at the creative industry and be like, oh, they're not doing anything with their lives. And then once <laughs> it's true, do you ever get that from people? All the people time. People are like, you're a photographer. All the time. What else are you doing with your life? <laughs> but I think when people take time to understand why mm -hmm. you're doing what you're doing and I think this is where it changed for my parents when I could actually explain to them why I was drawn to this what motivates me mm. where I see myself going Yeah. funnily enough I actually made my mom a PowerPoint presentation to explain this to her really? <laughs> so that she'd believe me it was a 30 yeah. slide PowerPoint <laughs> presentation <laughs> on why I want to do this and mm -hmm. where I see myself going and my goals and after that she was like wow 
okay. This makes okay. sense. But At least she's, she's pitched it to me. I've so. literally pitched it to her. Yeah. But she's made me do that in countless uh, countless areas of my life. Like when I chose the university I wanted to go to. It's mm-hmm. like, fine, then make me a report on why you want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a common trend. But, I but how important is that to you? Just your parents giving you that oh my cosign. God. So, so, so important. I feel mm-hmm. like <coughs> family is one of the most important things to me. Um, I love them to bits, and I don't think I would be where I am without their love and support for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, even with the Olympics, with swimming, uh, especially my mom. My mom has been the backbone of my entire life. I can't imagine anything well, trust without me, her. It's it's always the mom. And I'm always tearing up talking about her. I can see. You know, I was just about to ask you, like, is it is it getting windy? No. Or? <laughs> but clearly, I can tell you're close to your mom. Yeah, Very yeah. close. I mean, she's my rock in life. Um, mm-hmm. Also, my dad. My dad's my best friend. My mom's my rock. So, definitely, definitely. Who, who used family. to come to practice when, you know, 13 okay. and swimming and everything? So, none of them came to practice, but they were both <laughs> there for the competition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah, think yeah. you need to pick and choose them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, I got accepted to a sports boarding school in South Africa at 14. And once my mom saw that, she was just like, you're going. And she put in all the motions to help me pursue the goal of the Olympics. Yeah. And any goal that I've had since then. Like, even when I told her that I definitely want to pursue content creation. And um, I was straight out of college. I didn't really have a job yet. And she's like, is there a course that you want to do? Let's let's do it, Lisa. I'll pay for yeah. it. Come on, let's go. Like, Physically, mentally, financially, she has been such a rock. And um, mom, if you watch this, I love you and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Make sure I send her a link. Yeah. And shout outs to your mom. Because, you know, <laughs> some some of these things, you know, people don't really understand. And that's why, like, even for me, I, from even the podcast, I've just learned so much. And even you can see from just different upbringings and everything, how just people's mind space tend to become yeah and i the, the only thing that i can say i've learned a lot from the podcast is just like even parenting is so important it mm. is i feel it's like it's so important because that you do you need support in your life you yeah need to yeah you need to feel like someone believes in you yeah but even not, but not everybody gets that you know that yeah. right I guess so. I so mean, I, like, self-belief yeah. is important too. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Uh, yeah. Very important. You need to believe in yourself and where you're going and love yourself. Because um, can you imagine if you were trying to pursue that and they're like, no, no, you can't do this. We want you to do this, this, and this. You know, you would do it to please them, them but and then eventually, you end up, exactly. after a couple of years, you drop that and you actually now start going back to... What you actually love. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. It makes things so much easier when the people that you love also believe in the same dream that you're chasing um, nice. it helps you get there faster it helps you feel more motivated mm. um, like I said it really it really helps to to know that other people believe in you and think that you have a talent especially um, in the creative industry people are so critical of your work which yeah. constructive criticism is always <laughs> good because you can learn and grow yeah but, but like yeah. it's you're I know putting the assholes out there, you're talking about you're yeah putting out an extension of you or what you felt at a certain point if it's a personal project um, yeah I actually just did a project on my Instagram about heartbreak so if any of you oh go listen, check that out hold on hold, we're, we're, we're getting to that you see the last questions over here it's <laughs> all relationship it's all relationship oh my god let's start talking about relationships <laughs> what okay so now um, now let's just close that chapter yeah parents support and everything gear and everything let's jump into the last segment which is a Health, wealth, love, and happiness. Ah. Happiness is always just like an outro question that I normally ask people. But let's talk about just love. We have to touch on that. Okay. What do you want to touch on? Ask me a question. <laughs> What's your relationship status? I'm currently single and hey. loving it. Um. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> Welcome to the singles club. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you mentioned something that at least helped me to pave, just paved way into like the next segment of the podcast, which is almost like a, just a summary, almost just like winding up, right? Oh. So we'll do that for like five, 10 minutes. Sounds good. So just brace yourself. Do we, do we need to get some tissue or something? No, 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 I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the smile's on my face. Okay. Before, we've we've before talked we a lot about my mom. Yeah. Um, my dad is literally my 
my partner in crime and uh, my adventure buddy, mm-hmm. he actually learned how to skydive two months ago. So he just got his license. And he's a badass. <laughs> like I, like even yeah. right now, I think I have to go. Don't you need... Like for me, I think I just need... I don't even know, man. Is it even healthy to jump off a plane if I'm high? Because I don't think I can do it like if just... If you're high. Oh. Okay, like n- maybe if I'm strapped if I'm strapped to someone, Somebody of else. course. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just think that in itself, it's such an experience that doing it sober would make you feel like complete euphoria. You would not... Really? You could, I recommend doing it sober because then you can truly experience it. And I promise you, it is one of the best feelings in the world. Try it. I'll save for for that Dubai skydive. Sky dive. Yeah, yeah. Ask for Brandon. The, Brandon's awesome. You already know, like the. Yeah. How many times have you done it in Dubai? <laughs> I haven't done it in Dubai. <laughs> uh, the Dubai jumpers used to come here to Kenya. Oh yeah. For uh, boogie. Boogie is like a skydiving festival. Yeah. Um, so I met a lot of them. Skydiving Dubai is but awesome. He, it's he, definitely he, on the list. But, but he's. He's a wha- tandem. He's a okay. tandem instructor. Okay. So okay. I definitely recommend going with him. He's good okay. fun. Okay, that's that's. I need that contact. So, let's get back to the last segment, yes. which want of course, because I know you have some important stuff to go and do, like you know, gym work. What else <laughs> do you say you have to go and do? <laughs> a lot of stuff. But let's just talk about the love segment. When was the last time you were in a relationship? And do you think, as a creative person, does it slow you down, or does it make you even more creative? Personally, I, it slows me down. It slows you down. Yeah. I was in a relationship a year ago. Mm. Um, it's pretty serious. We moved to Seattle together. Wait. We got an apartment. We had a dog. He came and met the entire Indian family here in Kenya um, and my parents. So when it ended, I was completely heartbroken. But honestly, I feel like there's a lot of beauty and pain that you experience as a person and beauty in the experiences you go through because I cannot even tell you how much I learned and how much I grew. I was so inspired by the entire heartbreak that I made a heartbreak series of photos. Uh, It was a personal project. It wasn't for a client. Mm. It's on my Instagram. Um, You should, or on my website, you should go check it out. I'll put the tag below. I'll Um, put the tag down below. But yeah, I found, I found the experience inspirational as a creative because emotions are inspirational experiences are inspirational you can relate to other people who have been through the same thing mm-hmm. and you look online and sorry thank you. How, how long were you together we were together for a year mm-hmm. which isn't really that long but wait like, you moved in with him after a year <laughs> things happen very fast it's like one of those romances that you just took yeah, it and yeah. ran with it um i, yeah. I still never understand when people say things happen really fast I guess so, but I mean, in my head, honestly, it was like a fairy tale. I met this incredible guy. We were like exactly the same person. And it was just one of those romances where you just took it and run. You traveled the world, you moved in together. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It seems like it's out of a movie or a fairy tale. But yes, honestly, you think? Um, <laughs> looking back, I'd never really experienced a love like that before. So I don't regret it at all. Mm. It showed me that those fairy tale types of love do exist in the world even if it is for a short moment of time and those good ones are the most dangerous ones first of they're all they're so passionate they have their yeah, highs it, everything their is just like extremes but like i have never felt that sense of like romantic love yeah. before so to experience it as a creative or just to experience it in life and know that it actually existed was incredible um and obviously the heartbreak was horrible but looking at it now i'm glad i went through it because it taught me so much. Who cheated? He did. But, <sighs> but, it's an experience. <sighs> it was an experience. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? But, uh, oh yeah, but also straight after my breakup, I moved to Seattle with him for his job because he worked for Microsoft. After the breakup? No, during the, before oh, yeah. the breakup, not during the oh, breakup. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause was, um, mm-hmm. For his job, and Ooh. I was looking at... Uh, really boring business admin jobs because I thought that's what I should do and as soon as we broke up I was like fuck it stop thinking about other people sorry I just swore start no, stop no, thinking no. Hey, about hey, other listen, people first of all you can cuss as much as you want in the podcast <laughs> Did, didn't I say that no I didn't know that you <laughs> can you can what um, anyway so yeah. as soon as we broke up because I feel like in a relationship 
you think about both people. You don't only think about yourself. Yeah, you're so always that's thinking about. That's probably why it slows you down because yeah. you love someone. You want to put them first as well. Yeah. And you want both of you to grow and succeed. Yeah. But that means taking their goals and their vision mm. and their wants and needs into account, yeah. not just your own. Yeah. Uh, which I feel like you should do in every relationship. Don't yeah. get me wrong. You can't be selfish. But uh, yeah. hence the reason I moved to Seattle. I hate the cold. I hate, mm. hate the cold. Mm. Seattle was freezing. <laughs> um, it wasn't horrible, but it was mm-hmm. freezing. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't too happy there. So as soon as I found out everything happened, I booked a one-way ticket to LA. And honestly, to this day, it was the best thing I did. So good things came out of it. Really good things. It's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful story because you see, you always have, and it's funny because just in life in general, those are the things that make or break us. True. And even as an artist, that that's why I'm saying like for me, I just know once I start getting somebody who doesn't understand me or what I do, I mean like I'm always like just straight up start, start like just hinting like, yo, just know. <laughs> In the event that this happens, in the event that this happens, I'm just looking out for for my sanity. Because as a creative, what's the one thing that you value so much? As a creative, life. No, 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 no. It's your head. It's your brain. You value your mental health is no, okay. the, 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 like the highest priority. You won't be able to create properly. I think mental health is definitely important. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think that. If you think about, again, I'm going to drive, draw back to Sam Calder because I yeah. actually, this guy is incredible. If you haven't seen his videos, yeah. you yeah. should watch them. His, I can't believe you don't know he was ins- in Kenya, first of all. His inspiration in life yeah. comes from losing his brother. Uh, what inspires him, hmm. what inspired him to create and travel the way that he does yeah. was losing his brother at 16 years old. No one should ever have to go through that at all. Mm -hmm. But there's these experiences in life, whether they're good or bad, painful, make you lose your head a little. Yeah. They they teach you things. They they inspire you in in ways. Even though I don't wish pain or death on anybody. Mm -hmm. But through these horrible experiences, whether it's heartbreak or loss or 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 getting not achieving your goals or failure, I feel like through all those negative things is also a lesson. Um, and yeah, it can lead to some beautiful inspiration. That's true, that's true. But like I was just saying, it's it's kind of like tricky. What's that? <laughs> There's a bug <laughs> on the mic. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> I was like, fly away. <laughs> yeah, so I was just saying, um, it's just interesting. As Like for me, I'm just saying, as a creative, I don't like being stressed with things that I can actually avoid, if you get what I mean. Like, I don't want to put myself in a situation where I know this is going to be stressful and then now, hence, when I'm seated on my laptop, trying just to focus on, like, one video edit, I can't even, like, think straight. Because your mind is somewhere else. Yeah, and there's nothing I can do about it because it's, like, in my head. But don't you also feel like that happens as a creative? Like, sometimes when you've been on shoot after shoot after shoot, you're sat there thinking about the next shoot and you're trying to get creative and then you're you're literally hitting a wall. It doesn't happen to me anymore. No, it doesn't. No? Like, I feel like... But once... It's just the process of life. Sometimes you're super creative. Sometimes yeah. you go through slumps where you're like, okay... I, I know. I need a break at sitting on this laptop. I need a break of thinking about this. I just yeah. need to get up and go outside and maybe go on a run. The, the um, only thing that would make me not be creative at times is maybe like, let's say, if I have a pending check somewhere that hasn't gone through, that will affect my editing process. If... I'm in a situation with someone and they're stressing me out. That will affect my creative process. So if those two things are like set in order, oh, trust me. I can I give can, me all the shoots I, you want. Le- okay, I understand where you're going because yeah. lately, I think it was yesterday. One of my friends is like, "Sisa, you're not really dating people. Why?" And I'm like, "I'm." Just you're not mov- dating. Well, it's not really the top of my priority at the moment. And let me, listen, let me explain you know why. why. Let me explain okay, why. Okay, okay, tell me. It touches on what you were just saying. Yeah. For me, when I'm not really dating, but if I end up in a relationship, like I said, I spend so much time and effort on the other person. And right now, moving back home and establishing a name for myself here, hopefully. Yeah. 
I think that that should require and take all my energy at the moment. Yeah. Like I'm focused on building myself at the moment that I kind of want to be selfish without giving someone else my attention. True. At least for a little bit. Um, now you understand what I'm saying. It might now slow that, you down. That's why I'm understanding what you're saying because yeah. the more you explain it, the more I'm like, okay, Talisa, you're kind of doing a similar thing. Yeah. Like, I think everyone should date. Relationships are great. Um, but... I think that it comes to a moment in your ta- in your life that you need to be selfish and focus on you and growing your brand and commit to working hard towards what you want. Yeah. And then when that's all done, you can focus your energy on someone else. On somebody else. Um, but you're not going to get where you want to go without committing to your goals and giving it the time and effort that it, they require. Okay, what are some of the qualities like? Let's say when, when you start dating... <laughs> When you start dating, <laughs> if you ever start dating again, <laughs> what are some of the qualities that you'd look for in a guy? Um, wow, that's a tough one. No, it's not. I'll tell you the first one. Okay, firstly, <laughs> big heart. I feel like I could never be with someone who was completely selfish or didn't care about the world or care about other people. Mm. Um, I would definitely, <laughs> it's horrible, but have similar interests as me. I spend so much time wanting to see the world and experiencing different things. I don't think yeah. they would get along unless he was interested in things that I was interested in. Yeah. Um, wow. This is a tough question. I haven't even thought about this in a long time. Yeah, course, Charismatic course, course, goes a long yeah. way, outgoing. Yeah. Um, have, okay, wait. Have, have guys tried... Because you seem like such a romantic, first of all. <laughs> have yeah. guys, have, have guys, you know, tried shooting their shot, like, you know, just asking you out and stuff? At this point in time, yes, but I'm not, it's just not like, something nah. that I'm interested in at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happens when they ask you out? Like, has somebody I'm not dating. <laughs> you're not dating. I'm not dating, <laughs> but we can, we can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> Straight um, to the friend zone. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. That's very interesting. Okay, and what are some of the things that, let's say, you enjoy when you're dating someone? What I enjoy when I'm dating someone? Yeah, what are the just the simple being things? If somebody's asking someone, you... Being able to have... I think good communication is key in any relationship. Being mm-hmm. able to be open and communicate with the person that you're with. Be able to experience things with the person that you're with. Um, Especially when you're with someone, I think what I learned in my last relationship, you need to be in a partnership with someone. Yeah. You need to be two invi- strong individuals who help each other grow. Yeah. But uh, definitely a team in things. Like, there can't be one person dictating things to the other person. Mm. Um, Is that what was... I don't really know if that's what it was, but I just feel like... Hey, you can say it. It's over and done with. If you don't say it now, you're letting him win. It's very important to... Was he telling you what to do? No, he wasn't telling me what to do. Um, Some people. (laughs) It's a very awkward topic. Anyway, um, (laughs) but yeah, just truly understand and... Because you're such a nice person. That's the thing. And you see, that's... And also... I've I've had people on the podcast and I'm always saying like, you know, there are people who just come and just ruin these beautiful people who have like positive mindsets I just there no, to I enjoy think life relationships and love and yes I'm very romantic but also like you should have your fun in life for sure like go on a different experience be single and have be fun be single meet different people yeah um, don't commit yeah. and then find th- people that you're passionate about enjoy your life but Love is also a beautiful thing, but when it comes down to it, whoever you end up being with and dating, you should be able to appreciate them for who they are and be able to have an incredible time with them and know that they're there to support you and love you in the end. Hey, I can't add any. I can't add is there anything. anything I'm missing? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But you know, just thanks for sharing that because you know that's part of a segment that a lot of people we get to. And so many people just have different stories and that's just part of, if you think about it as grown-ups, that's something we can't avoid. Somehow, somewhere, just somebody's going to come and win you over and, you know, you'll go, you're going to let your guard down and just, you know, decide like this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. 
or maybe in an apartment in with and get a dog <laughs> or maybe just oh, that's a such an weeks that's with. such like an <laughs> LA movie right? first of all oh my gosh oh. good times anyway, right experiences experiences <laughs> in life but yeah definitely i think mm-hmm. that a lot of people spend a lot of time looking for that person i think at least for me like i want to live my life and when it happens it happens mm. or mm. Even if it's not the person and it's just an interesting person that adds to your inspiration, yeah. adds to your life. Because I feel like every person that you're with, whether it's serious or not serious or very casual in the end, yeah. you learn something from the people that you spend time with. Okay, so. another question, just when it comes to dating. Um, does it matter? Because I normally ask a lot of people, because like if you notice my demography, I have so many different kinds of friends. So... The question is, would you restrict yourself to dating someone in your ethnicity or are you open to like just dating a good person in I'm general? I'm open to dating anyone that interests me. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not limited by that. Um, again, your time is valuable. <laughs> oh, true, true. So if the person mm. you're intrigued with is worth you spending your time with, then yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter they are you know what they um, say about black men right <laughs> no 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 hold up hold up <laughs> wait, wait. Where are you going <laughs> hold up hold up <laughs> you know? no listen hold on i haven't finished what i'm Whoa, saying okay <laughs> <Why> are you <laughs> no you haven't been following the trend like right now online what trend? <laughs> what they say? What they saying about black what are black they men? Okay, explain those to me, because apparently I haven't. But why are you laughing? Because I'm just something laughing. must be funny, because you're <laughs> laughing. <'cause> you're <laughs> <laughs> you know what you they say? You yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> no, no, I am nice. I am nice. <laughs> so the ongoing trend right okay, now online, and you'll go look for it later. What they're saying about black men is, black men don't cheat. I don't know how much I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, is there anything else you think that I was going to no, say? No, 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 definitely that one. I just hadn't heard it yet. Oh, yeah. It's the ongoing trend now. There's a song out and everything. So, yeah, that's just like an ongoing thing. Mm-hmm. So, I just thought I should drop it in there. So, all <laughs> those rap songs you should hear about face. having multiple women in your bed <laughs> mean nothing right now. Okay, well, that, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> You know what? You're not ready for that. You no. should have seen your face. You should have seen your face. You're like, oh my god. I was like, I don't know how to explain myself right now. How do I comment? <laughs> okay, one more question just before we wrap up the podcast. Okay, well, this you know, would be a little more <laughs> easy to. Answer. No, this one, this one is gonna be easy. Just because okay. we're easing Shoot. out into the conversation and everything. What's the one thing that you think you're in pursuit of right now? That if you got it. It would give you a life better direction, meaning, or some sense of happiness. What's that Ooh. one thing that you think wow, you're in pursuit so many of? Wow, tough questions. Oh, I yeah. Think, oh, let me think about that for a second. Yeah, I told you it's a good question. That's yeah, a good question. You told yeah. me it wouldn't be hard. You said it was easy. <laughs> okay, I think mm-hmm. I'm in pursuit of... I need to say meaning or connection. Um, because right now I'm loving what I'm doing, but I really want my work to connect with other people and have meaning to them. Mm. I feel like knowing that other people can relate to things that you're spending your time and effort pouring your heart and soul into Mm. would bring me a lot of happiness. Um, Yeah, I'll tell you what does that for me right now. The podcast, since I started the podcast... I'm just getting different connections with people and yeah. I'm just looking at so many things differently because to me it's given me like, I know I do my normal content, but I get so much impact from this and just how people share and relate their stories just creates a very different... Yeah, and with connection you can also come, eventually I'd love to inspire people, whether it's to pick up a camera yeah. or to yeah. live their life or experience things, maybe yeah. try a skydive, you know, like just... <laughs> Well, yeah. Just connect on my with people through list. who you are, who your brand is, what your work is. Mm. I feel like that's the ultimate goal. Um. Hey, you can't beat that. <laughs> you can't beat that. So, 
I think I think we've talked about like you know a lot and everything <laughs> that we can. Anything <laughs> else? Everything we can, above. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? We can always like just revisit the conversation. And I can't just thank you enough for coming through well, to the podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm glad. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Mm. Obviously, I've giggled more than I can oh, yeah. handle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just thanks for coming. Where can people find you? And is there anything else you have going on that you'd like to plug on the podcast? Um, you can find me on Instagram. My name is Talisa Ladaway. I also have a website. It's called www.talisaladaway.com. Uh-huh. Um, I'm also on Facebook as Tally's World. Mm. Um, and yeah just watch the space hopefully coming out with some new exciting projects soon yeah and we should do some stuff soon yes let's collaborate yeah. come on let's do first, it first a gym session he promised me oh, man. <laughs> I had even look, forgotten about look that look at the level <laughs> of excitement on his face yeah I didn't call it excitement but, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it well, so thank that's you for it. having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope to, you know, we, we get to do this again. Maybe revisit the conversations. Yeah, maybe after, after a year in Kenya. Yeah. Maybe we might yeah. have some horror stories for oh, you. After, after just dealing with enough clients, <laughs> I'll tell. I'll just see on your Instagram and be like, yo, can we do that podcast now? It's time. I think it's time. I think it's time. So thanks for coming through, guys. If you haven't subscribed, it's the Kiss Capades podcast on YouTube. Um, Apple Podcasts, CastBox. Instagram, Twitter, all those platforms we are active every single day. I do it alone, of course. And, you know, if you'd want to pitch in, come into the team and do something extraordinary, hey, send, just shoot a message on the Kiskapids podcast at gmail.com. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. It's the Kiskapids podcast. How was that? Good. <laughs> Just so you don't what? It, just like, well, no, why? Why is he going here?